Hare Krishnas. Welcome devotees to today's class. We shall be talk, talking about action in Krishna consciousness for uh, Karma Yoga, Chapter 5 of Bhagavad Gita. Before we start, let us pray to Shri Shri Radha Gobindji for their mercy and also seek blessings of Shri Shri, uh, uh, His Holiness, uh, His Grace, Shri Anandi Prabhuji, the Temple President at Kulai. Kulai, Bangalore, is called Temple of Bangalore. Uh, Om Agyana Timirantha Sigyanan Jan Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Ena Tasmai Shri Gurve Nama Om Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Peshtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurvani Pracharni Nirvishesha Shunivadi Pashat Desha Tarni Deo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Kadadhar, Shri Vasadigaur Bhakta Vrinda, He Krishna Karna Sindhu, Deen Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesh Gopika Kanta, Shri Radha Kanta Namostate, Tapt Kanchan Gaurangi, Shri Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari, Vrashubhan Sute Devi, Pramami Hari Pe, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome once again. So in the chapter 4 which we discussed finished last uh, day that uh, yesterday we had five sections. First section knowledge about Krishna's transcendental how he mentioned that the knowledge was given to uh, earlier to sun god first in the place and then there was a counter question from Arjuna, how you could give it because Sun God is senior to you, that he explains further. Second uh, chapter, uh, second section, again Krishna uh, mentioned about the that he was the creator of Varnashwa, for uh, Varn and Ashrama, all he was created and they were created on the basis of good and karma, not on the basis of birth or caste. Section 3 dealt with the Karma Yoga. Again, uh, we heard about that three types of karmas, that is the kar, uh, akarma, vikarma and the karma. Karma here refers to nishkam, uh, karma yoga, that is all. And sections four dealt with the transcendental knowledge related to sacrifices, different type of sacrifices, which uh, ultimately resulted into the culmination of knowledge and happiness and also uh, disentanglement from material contaminations. Then summary of transcendental knowledge was given in chapter 4. So chapter 5, uh, details, small detail summary is given here. There are six sections. This is not a very big chapter though, but sections are multiple. First section, deals with Nishkam Karma Yoga, easier than renouncing the work. It is renouncing Nishkam Karma Yoga, that means you perform your duty, giving up the results to Lord Krishna. And... Uh, rather than running away to forest and renunciation of work. So sannyas karma or sannyas yoga, that is the theme of verse number five, one to six. Second section deals how to perform nishkar karma yoga. That is the question uh, Krishna uh, Arjuna asked that how to do it. I, you are t t t telling two contradictory things. So which one is better? This is explained now in section two. Section 3 deals with platform of knowledge, knowing the three doers. There are three doers. Uh, does anybody remember who are three doers from level 1? In chapter 5, as this, this has been discussed. The living entity, the super soul, and the material nature. These are three doers. Without these three doers, no work can be accomplished. The In fact, uh, the doer is not super soul as, as such, but it is only an uh, it is only permitter and observer, uh, uh, overseer only. It oversees activity only, but like a kind father or merciful father permits. So super soul is not doer, but yes, sanctioner is there. The section four deals with liberation by focus in super soul, and section five liberation through astang yoga, which is a very tough uh, ladder. We know all those kind of eight limbs of astang yoga. And it, it is not practicable in this Kali Yoga. And what is practicable, most practicable uh, yoga in the Kali Yoga? Anyone? Namasankirtan. 
नाम संकीर्तन दैट इज संकीर्तन है योगा और जप योगा इज द द मोस्ट प्रैक्टिकेबल एंड इजीएस्ट विदाउट एनी क्वालिफिकेशन बिकॉज फॉर दस टाइम यू हैव लॉट ऑफ क्वालिफिकेशन एट टाइप ऑफ रूल्स सेवन टाइप ऑफ रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन हैव टू फॉलोड बिफोर यू वन सक्सीड इन बट द अल्टीमेट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ ज्ञान कर्मा एंड अष्टांग योगा इज टू नो द रियलिटी एंड द रियलिटी इज डिटैचमेंट फ्रॉम द मेटीरियल एंटेंगलमेंट एंड अटैचमेंट टू स्प्रिट सोल और अटैचमेंट टू द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड सो अल्टीमेट गोल of uh, and that is the path of liberation for all by by or forming by following all these uh, yogas and section 6 finally deals with place platform a piece on the platform of liberation so uh, brahma bhut prasanna atma na shochati na kamshati but person who is established in self realization he is always peaceful he neither limits nor is happy when something is achieved so this section this these are the four section now lord krishna says uh, that nishkam karma yoga is easier than nishkam karma yoga means that we should perform activities without uh, any uh, desire for results or fruit uh, benefits thereof and whatever accrues a benefit or uh, and benefit or fruits accrued after doing some activity they are offered to lord krishna and renouncing work it means that no karma is done and person uh, just takes sanyas or uh, from the karma doing any activity so that is a state of inactivity whereas Nish nishkam karma yoga is a state of activity in which everything is done for service of krishna so now arjun again asks whether is renouncing work is superior to working with detachment he got confused because entire four chapter talked about uh, gyan yoga and in the last uh, verse number 42 4.42 krishna says now stand up and fight cut this uh, darkness of ignorance by knowledge and the light of sword of knowledge and stand and fight so earlier he was talking about gyan yoga and gyan yoga was that uh, the soul is supreme that one should not uh, or satisfy his own uh, senses but work for krishna only so attaining the kingdom i mean getting victory after uh, the battle and then enjoying the kingdom of hastinapur will be a sense gratification so this is what he is thinking now in this term that how can i i should better renounce the work rather than uh, and make sense uh, sense gratification for myself so krishna replies the both are equal in the sense that both are means to go attain the same goal and what is the same goal realization of self whether you are uh, a sanyasi or a karma yogi or nishkam karma yogi both have same uh, same and common goal that is liberation but a person who is in a uh, renounced order who is a sanyasi for him liberation is not very easy there are so many chances of falling down again and again and unless is heart is as we heard uh, learned earlier unless a sanyasi purifies his heart by uh, sacrifices and then takes up sanyas then only he succeeds in liberation otherwise he does not and purification of uh, heart by doing no activity or inaction that is sanyas or uh, sanyas of karma is not possible so krishna replies that both are equal the, the sense in, in fact whether you renounce a sanyas yoga or karma yoga both are same ultimately because the goal is that attainment of liberation so emphasizes krishna now emphasizes working with detachment is as easier and superior so this is krishna's reply to which one uh, is better renunciation or karma yoga so the first question uh, the first uh, in fact uh, um question put up by arjuna in the chapter 5 is sanyasam karmanam krishna punar yogam cha sanshasi yakshe hi et yore yore kam tanme bruhi sunishchitam arjuna said first of all you asked me to renounce work because entire four chapter was on uh, bhakti yoga the transcendental knowledge you gave me and then again you are recommending work with devotion so uh, work with devotion that means you fight and uh, offer the results to me so work with devotion that is bhakti yoga now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial tanme bruhi sunishtan please tell me for 
for certain what is yakshre for out of these two which is better now we'll go back to uh, some of the chapters which we have covered earlier chapter 2 the compassion was removed by jnana in 2.11 to 30 then sinful reactions by buddhi yoga 38 to 53 same chapter so these two doubts two reasons for not fighting were cleared by jnana yoga and buddhi yoga now in chapter number 3 again and you see, but for one who takes pleasure in the self, whose human life is one of self-realization and who is satisfied in the self only, fully satisfied for him, there is no duty. He said there is no duty for a person who is uh, Brahmabhut, uh, who is self-realized, who is uh, equiposed, he has no duty to perform. That duty here we refer to the prescribed duties as prescribed in the duty. In the So as a Kshatriya, my prescribed duty is to fight, but you you say that you, you, if you are self-realized, you have no duty to perform. That means as a Shatri, I should not fight. Is self-realized, second in verse, in the continuation he says, is self-realized, man has no purpose to fulfill discharge of his prescribed duties, nor he has any reason not to perform such work. This sentence apparently seems to be contradictory because nor has he any reason not to perform work. On one side, he should fulfill his discharge, duty, uh, discharge duties which are prescribed and now he has no reason to perform it. That means uh, uh, two things are good. One says that perform prescribed duties. The other, on the other side says that there is no reason you should not do to prescribed duties. So nor he has any need to depend on any other living being. So that means I should uh, uh, give up this uh, battlefield and uh, go and take sannyas should not perform kill. And here you can see uh, the picture, you can see that uh, uh, in 433, uh, uh, the uh, 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 Maharaja Yudhishthir is performing some kind of worship to Lord Krishna and uh, uh, he, uh, he's uh, abusing uh, Krishna 99 times this uh, abuse was uh, uh, you know, given by Krishna, but uh, Krishna kept on listening to him uh, so, uh, uh, and ultimately, 100 times when uh, he again uh, gave abuse or some used disrespectful word, he was killed by Sudarsha Chakna. So, here the, the theme of this picture is that Maharaj Yudhishthir is performing a sacrificial duty, which is prescribed duty for him, and he is doing devotional service to Lord Krishna. So, in 4.33, O chastisizer of the uh, chastiser of uh, the enemy that sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than the mere sacrifice of material possession. So sacrifice performed in knowledge. Knowledge means doing devotional service of Lord Krishna is better than the giving up of the material items in the fire of sacrifice. Because that is that is Drabhimai Yajna. But one should know that why he is giving this uh, these rabbia or the oblation materials in the sacrificial fire, because they should ultimately reach, uh, you know, uh, Lord Krishna ultimately, or Krishna should be pleased for satisfaction. Sacrifice is performed for pleasure of Lord Vishnu, who is this, uh, who is the Yajna Purish, and Vishnu is none other than Lord Krishna himself. Because Krishna created Lord Vishnu, so ultimately the all sacrifice. So material, uh, you know, material possessions sacrifice is not in knowledge. Possession, the when a person possesses this knowledge that what sacrifice is performing in the sacrificial fire is reaching Lord Krishna and is is for the pleasure of Krishna. And also we learned the cycle of sacrifice that how performing prescribed duty as per Vedas. The results into uh, you know offering of sacrifice and sacrifice results into pleasure of demigods who give us rains and rains give us grains and grains give us food which sustains us and the food is ultimately offered to demigods again or Lord Krishna again so that the cycle is complete. So Yudhishthir Maharaj here or the, you can see that uh, uh, he is performing this devotional service in sacrifice in full knowledge or the goal uh, of that uh, sacrifice is that is what 
So the sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than the mere sacrifice of better possession. After Losan of Pratha, all sacrifices of work culminate in transcendental knowledge. So if you are sacrificing sacrifices of work, that is karma sannyas will also result into transcendental knowledge. Because karma sannyas, sannyas from the karma means that one gets detached from the material uh, objects and material sense gratification. And when one gets detached from material, then there is natural attachment towards Krishna. So this is the transcendental knowledge which is one gains by sacrifice. And 4.42, the this is the uh, verse which confused Arjuna again. And 3.31 uh, and 32 also uh, Arjuna asked the same question. On the one side you are asking me, giving me jnana and uh, buddhi yoga and on the other side you are giving me uh, the uh, uh, instructions to fight or karma yoga. So what should I do? Now again 4.42 he is confused. Therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge. Now, he talked about so much of uh, inaction in uh, action that is Krishna consciousness or jnana or, or bhakti yoga. Now he is saying stand up and fight, stand and fight, and that is karma yoga. So that means that whatever uh, ignorance, that the knowledge was transcendental, which was given by Lord Krishna in chapter three, the uh, chapter four. And uh, now in chapter 5, is, uh, chapter at the end of uh, chapter 4, he is asking uh, Arjuna to stand and fight. So this is the background in which we shall start with today's chapter. So chapter 2 starts uh, with the uh, chapter 2 was Jnana Yoga, work through Buddhi Yoga, that was the message here. And in, then Arjuna became confused. That uh, what should I do? Jnan Yoga or Buddhi Yoga? Buddhi Yoga means refer to your Bhakti Yoga. So between two, which is better, Jnan or Bhakti? So, or Nishkam Karma Yoga. Then chapter three, what should he do after this confusion? The Lord again heard about Karma through Jnana. Uh, that it action in, in action and in action is action. In action, in action is uh, the uh, services or activities performed in uh, uh, with full knowledge of Lord Krishna and offering the results to Krishna. So, conclusion was Krishna glorified the transcendental knowledge in chapter number 4, ultimately. But at the, as just we saw, chapter number 4 at the end, verse number 42, he says, no, so cut the ignorance by the, no, the weapon of the knowledge, and then he says, stand and fight. So, now, in knowledge is that I should not fight, I should not kill because soul uh, does not require any sense gratification. But now he's saying that you stand and fight. So this, this entire theme is uh, apparently same, but apparently contradictory, but in fact it is the same. The purpose of Jnana Yoga, Bodhi Yoga or Bhakti Yoga is to, self, to get the attain self-realization that I am not this body, I am the soul, I am eternal, I am part and parcel of Lord, and also I am the eternal servitor of Lord Krishna. So this is the self-realization, and ultimately the soul is eternal. If you somebody uh, is killed, he, the soul is not killed, soul remains. Soul is eternal. So, Chapter 5 begins with Karma Yoga or action in Krishna consciousness. That means action in Krishna consciousness means all activities, whatever we do or whatever material objects we utilize in our life, on day-to-day -day life, they should be utilized for the loving devotional service of Krishna. There is no need to renounce them. No need to re renounce material objects or material but they should not be done for, used for self-sense gratification. They should be used for the pleasure of Krishna or in the loving service of Krishna. So this is action in Krishna consciousness. All beings constantly making plans for the future. This is how we normally uh, have our day-to-day -day activities or conduct of behavior. All beings are constantly making plans for the future. All of us are making plans. Day and night we are thinking about something or new. And Thoughts are manifested in action when who for making you know the plans effective 
we have to act certain uh, certain activities are performed and repeated action forms habit and when repeated form uh, habit then habit becomes our character so right from the first stage is plan then we think about those plans and then we uh, act to implement those plans and implementation repeated with then it becomes re repeated implementation in a certain manner becomes our form of a habit and habit becomes our character and character decides our destiny because what we are going to be ultimately is determined basically by our plans and thoughts and actions, habits and characters and that becomes our destiny. So how to take a step? Now this, this is a sequential uh, change in which activities are performed and what they decide our destiny. Now, all of us are here in Krishna consciousness. So, you know, we thought of it. We planned, we planned that let us join Bhagavad Gita classes so that we attain some knowledge of Lord Krishna and uh, what happened, what message he gave in Bhagavad Gita. So that thought came in your our mind. And thought uh, gave a, uh, take, took a fruitful shape in the form of joining this program. And now all of you are coming daily here. That means we, it is it has become our habit. Now, when habit, the whatever we have, we have inculcated or learned so far, that will be reflected through our act, uh, character. And now this is our destiny that we are heading towards pure Krishna consciousness, or we want to have, do certain devotional service or bhakti to Krishna. So. How we should take right direction? Arjuna's uh, this this chain of reaction is being mentioned here. So one should not deviate from this act, right action. That means one should not uh, deviate from the destiny which one has on the goal which one has decided beforehand while making a plan in the beginning. So that there is a certain course to uh, right from point of making a plan to to achieving a certain destiny. We have to follow certain path. And what is that correct path that is described in chapter number five? These steps leading to further entanglement in body. But the path is not easy, you know. Attaining that goal is not very easy or making our destiny as a pure devotee, pure devotee of Krishna is not quite easy. There are so many entanglements in the, or the worldly complexities. You know, if you are getting up early in the morning, uh, during uh, you know Mangal attending Mangal Arti at four thirty in the temple, uh, then probably some of your um, family members may not appreciate it. Or while you are doing japam or doing your mala, then probably somebody is uh, maybe commenting that to look uh, she is not doing or he is not doing anything. He is just doing japam and puja. Probably so this kind of complexities in the worldly affairs. Those who are materialistic in approach those who are not very spiritually elevated or understanding, they will definitely create complexities. So there are steps leading to a life of liberation. Our goal is liberation ultimately. Destiny, we want to go back uh, go back home, back to Godhead. That is our destiny ultimately. That is, And that is liberation from this Ashashatam Dukhale. That is this misery of ocean, this prison which we are thrown into because of our unfulfilled desires and uh, our uh, you know actions in our past life that has to be uh, done away and we want freedom from this we want to go back home where we belong to ultimately and there is eternal peace there so so this is a graphic representation what we just said thoughts become a, a result into action action results into habit habit results into character and character decides our destiny ultimately and destiny is reaching going back back home to back to godhead so now this uh, uh, Arjuna's misunderstanding is that devotional service is better than dry mental speculation. Why should I fight? You have said, given me transcendental knowledge in chapter 4, so it is better to renunciation work, take sannyas from the karma and do devotional service only. So, but the goal he has forgotten, that is why this confusion has come up in his mind. Right? So, Second chapter, this is just a summary. I will just very quickly go through. Knowledge of the soul was described in such that soul is eternal uh, uh, and it is never born and it never dies. 
then prescribed duties are explained. And in second chapter, again, entanglement of soul due to fruitive activities. That is, karma kant was explained. And then how to uh, disentanglement by devotion, how to get disentangled, uh, entangled from the karma, uh, that uh, sakam karma yoga by doing devotional service. That was chapter three dealt with no duty for a person who is self-realized. Uh, Brahma Bhut, Prashanatma, Nashochati, Nakangshati. So there is no duty for a person who is already established in self realization. Chapter 4 dealt with all kinds of sacrifice work. Uh, sacrificial work culminates in knowledge. So by performing of performance of sacrifices, one gets real knowledge. And what is that real knowledge? That real knowledge is the transcendental knowledge about, about own self. So, and last verse, Krishna again says that stand up, get up and fight. So, Krishna is, Arjuna is confused. And also, what, what should I do? And this is our status also, in fact. We are also some, most of the times confused. What should we do? Uh, what, what is the right course of action? And here, the importance of the spiritual master comes. Because uh, the spiritual master is Tattva Darshi. He has seen the truth. He knows the truth and he has received the message from the disciplic succession. So he is the right person who can guide us and tell what is the right path from the plan to the stage of liberation or deciding our destiny. So is it is Krishna's plan to keep Arjun confused. Now, uh, why Arjuna is asking this question? Is really uh, Arjuna confused? Uh, any opinion about this? Anyone can tell? Is really Arjuna confused? Yes. What do you think? Arjuna is confused about what should he do? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah. Pranam. Yeah. Arjuna is not confused. He is asking those questions so that we will understand from that. Yeah. So we should understand Arjuna is not confused. In fact, it is Lord Krishna's Yoga Maya which has covered the mind of uh, Arjuna. And had Arjuna not asked this question, then probably messages of Gita would not have been delivered by Lord Krishna himself. So as Mataji said, that it is for our benefit, for benefit of entire humanity. What is good for us to do? The, uh, remove, uh, the uh, Running away from our prescribed duties or not doing karma and take sannyas and live aside in a solitary place and uh, do nothing or live here in this material world, use every opportunity or every material uh, substance for ser in service of Krishna and do de render devotional service when one person renders devotional service, he becomes detached from the material aspect. We all of us know. Earlier, most of us were very interested in watching TV or cinemas or some going to some entertainment places or clubs or something like. Once since one has we have come into Krishna consciousness, we have abandoned those things. We are getting detached from those material entanglements. We are getting more attached to Krishna. So that is the yoga maya effect on the mind of arjuna which has uh, you know clouded or fogged his mind about thinking krishna has done it deliberately so that arjuna keeps on asking him because we are not we are very mura we are not we are very foolish people we do not know the real uh, even method of asking questions from our spiritual master so arjuna is very intelligent he is a pure disciple pure devotee pure vaishnava he knows what the generation or the people will be asking about, they will be confused and how their confusion should be removed. So he's asking for our benefit. And to stress that work and renunciation are not opposed to each, each other. I just now mentioned that purpose of doing work and purpose of not doing work, that is san karma sannyas and karma yoga or bhakti yoga, they are not different. They are same because the ultimate goal is same. Goal is realization, self-realization, happiness, and getting the transcendental knowledge and ultimately liberation through reaching our real home. Rather, one must learn to work in a renounced spirit. That is, uh, sannyas 
in karma or sannyas of karma. So this is work in it renounces means sannyas in karma. We should perform our duties, but in a renounced order. Renounced order means that, that we should not uh, consider ourselves as doer, number one. We should not use the benefits or fruits of the our activities. Number three, we should offer these fruits or benefits to Lord Krishna as his own uh, prasadam and we should keep on doing our uh, devotional service to Lord Krishna in a loving manner. So one must learn to work in a renounced spirit. That means detached attachment. We, we do our activities, but we remain detached from those activities. So this is a uh, uh, important statement here about the Arjuna's confusion. Arjuna thinks that Gyan implies the uh, gyan, uh, jana uh, implies the renunciation of work because knowledge says that don't don't work here go and to a, a solitary place meditate on the, the lord lord or his brahman uh, effulgence and try to merge him don't do any work the knowledge and this knowledge and work they are just like 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 contradictory because they are not the same thing if i work then uh, i cannot renounce uh, if I renounce, then I don't have to work. And if I work, then I am not in a state of renunciation. That, that means that in one, in knowledge should also work. Lord Krishna emphasizes that in action is action is required. That is, you perform your action, but it uh, perform it as in action. That you are not the doer, that you are not the user, that you are not the beneficiary of the outcome of your work. So, we have seen Arjuna's uh, confusion. Further, he says, you say work for sense activity must be given up. That is Sakam Karma Yoga, that is activities performed for satisfaction of our own senses, that must be given up. So, if I fight for the here in the battlefield, I will be gainer. If I win, then I will enjoy this kingdom. And enjoyment of kingdom will amount to my own sense gratification. So you said that knowledge is better, the knowledge of soul is better. So now uh, knowledge of soul is better, then I should not uh, fight. That, that means I should give up. If one works with devotion, then how work is uh, how is work is stopped? So this is another complex situation. If I work with devotion, then how work how is work is stopped? That means if I use buddhi yoga or if I do devotional service, uh, then I have to, uh, I don't need to work anything because work has not to work is not required because everything activity is done for devotional service. Then my own work is not required. So Krishna is confused again here. If one works with devotion, then how is his work is stopped? So that means one still keeps on doing some kind of work. You speak in riddles, action in action and action in action. I am confused. So this is the state of Arjuna here. Now you can see the two pictures. One person is in a renounced order. He is a renunciate, doing only meditation and uh, uh, focusing or meditating on the Brahman effulgence and wants to merge into it. And he doesn't want to work. He is not working anything. And here the Arjuna and Krishna, you can see here, they are the Arjuna is seen as fighting and he is working with devotion because Lord Krishna has ordered him to fight. So in devotion to Lord's instruction he is doing some activity here and this person is not doing any activity. So uh, yes uh, this was uh, Arjuna's confusion 5.1 we have already discussed. Anybody would like to read this one? 5.2 Any no. doubt or any question till what uh, this review we have taken uh, place uh, before? Anyone? Is everybody there? I am. Am I audible? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, thank you. So, anybody would like to read this uh, verse to Sri Bhagwan who watches? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes. Please. Yeah. Please continue. Mm -hmm. Shri Bhagwan Vacha Tam Yasa Karma Yogascha 
पर्सनलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड रिप्लाइड द री री यूनियन यूनियन सिकेशन ऑफ वर्क वर्क इन डिवोशंस आर बोथ गुड फॉर लिबरेशन बट of the two work in the devotional service is better than reunification of work thank you so much so lord after listening arjuna's doubt then renunciation or work which is better for me tell me for certain lord says that renunciation of work and work in devotion that is bhakti yoga and uh, the sanyas yoga they are good for liberation because ultimate goal of for both of them is liberation from this material bondage but of the two work in devotional service is better than renunciation you can see on the picture over here uh, that uh, yudhishthir maharaj is doing raj uh, yagya and uh, lord krishna was invited as the chief deity or uh, the receiver of the this enjoyer of this yajna and he is being served so what is he doing he is doing devotional service to krishna he is act, acting uh, in devotional service to krishna he is not renounced uh, a person he is using all these material objects in the service of lord krishna so you uh, how many types of bhairagya are there sanyas are there we talked about them some time back two types of uh, sanyas anyone many times it was discussed in past yukta bairagya and falgu bairagya is it okay anybody would like to mention what is uh, explain what is yukta bairagya and what is falgu bairagya Hari Krishna Prabhu ji. Yes. Yukta Vairagya is using everything for the Lord, and uh, Falgu Vairagya is for our sense gratification. Yes, thank you. So Yukta Vairagya, Yukta means whatever material objects are there in this material world or material nature, we if we use them for service of Lord Krishna, not for our own sense gratification, but for the pleasure of Krishna. then it is yukt bairagya and shila prabhupad was using every you know modern uh, gadgets electronic gadgets at whatever was available at that time in the service of lord krishna he was traveling by aircraft so that was not for his own sense but to spread the lord's holy name and message world over so that there is a falgu bairagya it is called falgu bairagya does anybody know about falgu word माइंड इज स्टिल in in falgu bairag person is always thinking of own sense gratification is not thinking of the pleasure of lord krishna so two types of bairag uh, bairag they are there and yudhishthir maharaj in this picture is doing yukt bairag he is using all material food articles fruits patram pushpam phalam toyam and all other kind of precious and dishes in this service of lord not for his own sense gratification he will take it receive them as prasadam afterwards so this is yukta bairagya so lord krishna says that uh, that of work in devotional service is better than renunciation it is better than uh, that uh, the, that you uh, give up all you know articles of material world and uh, go to a solitary place do meditation and do no activity this is not krishna krishna consciousness is proactive activity in which person has a relationship has a mellow uh, or with krishna and this relationship we know those 12 rasas five primary and seven secondary rasas 
the devotee develops those kind of rasas, relationship with Krishna. So, and in, in the renunciation, there is no uh, uh, relationship, there is no, you know, any kind of rasa or mellow which binds the two. And there is, when there is no rasa, there is no tendency to serve or do any devotional service. So, renunciation, mayavadi, sannyasi, this is the different, this difference we have already, in fact, discussed. I will not go to this uh, very detailed. Uh, in fact, these are the verses yet to come. So, mayavadi, sannyasi, or renunciation, simply gyan insufficient for revelation, risk of fall down is there. Incomplete renunciation by a mayavadi is renunciation because their mind is still dwells on those uh, objects of material uh, uh, sense gratification. So their renunciation is incomplete. And they 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 try to find the root of Vishnu. Process is to detach from matter, no happiness, senses are restricted, cannot relish. You know, these some of these aspects are given as strong yoga. So there is no relationship, no work, and naturally there is no uh, you know enjoyment also, no happiness. Whereas it is just opposite in Vaishnava sannyas or work in devotion. So, yes, Mataji, please. Somebody raised your hand. Want to read? This one? Yeah, Riya Mataji. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Uh, uh, nyaya sa nitya sanyasi yo na dresti na ka. Kanakshati Nirdva Kangsati Nirdvan Duo Hi Maha Baho Sukham Bandhat Pramuchyate. One who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced. Such a person, free from all dualities, easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated. O mighty arm Arjuna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. We can see this uh, picture here. Uh, uh, can you can uh, you uh, describe the picture? What is happening here in this Mataji picture? The story uh, this is in the Mother Lila. Uh, yes, yes, Mataji. The trees where uh, two Devi goes who were cars by Narad Muni. Narad Muni. Narad Muni. So, uh, when Krish, uh, Krishna uh, performed the Moda Lila, they were liberated. Yes. After, Thank uh, you. So, they are Nalkuvir and Manigriva, and they were uh, living in Shivaloka, and they were taking bath and with the uh, ladies in a very uh, odd situation. Not, when Narad Muni passed through that place, they did not pay respect to. Uh, Narad Muni, they were consuming liquor, some kind of divine liquor there. They did not pay respect and uh, Narad Muni got infuriated. He cursed them that you will become trees uh, and they become trees uh, like, uh, you know, uh, they were uh, two Arjuna trees in Nanda Maharaj uh, garden and they remained there till they were liberated by uh, Lord Krishna, who was a child of five or seven, six years at that time. And during Damodar Leela, he that there was a Damodar that there this you can see the rope was tied against this uh, axle, and that Lord Krishna got, uh, ran out of this uh, palace, and, uh, and you know you know he uh, went round these Arjuna, Arjuna trees. We are very strong, and he just walked, kept on moving, and those trees got uh, uprooted, and they from uh, uprooting large sound, uh, large, uh, uh, big sound came out and these two persons, Nal Griva and uh, Nal, uh, Mani Griva and Nal Kubir, they came out and they were liberated by Lord Krishna himself. So this is Dhammadar Trita. Now, this Geya has, uh, Geya sa nitya sanyasi yona dveshti na kanchati nirdvandu hi mahabahu sukham bandhat, bandhat pramuchyati. So, act. neither hates one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of activity is known to be always renounced. If that means a person who does not hate, who does devo devotional service without de any desire uh, of results, 
he is already renounced. He is already a sannyasi. Such a person free from all dualities. He becomes free from all kinds of dualities which are of life are there, happiness and sorrow, and you know, um, gain or loss, easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated, O mighty Arjuna. So this Lord Krishna says that person who is uh, self-realized, who is already liberated. I just now mentioned that Brahmabhut uh, Prasannatmana Solchati Nakaj. But who is established in self, he is all, he's never limits. He does not even desire anything also. So, and you can see uh, that you are Arjuna, this message is to Arjuna, that you are self-realized person and you should not suffer from any kind of dualities. Duality is between Karma Yoga and Sannyas Yoga. Yes, Riyam this next one. Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah, San, uh, Sankhya Yogo uh, Prithag Bala Prabhadanti Na Pandita Ekam Api Asthita Samyag Ubhayor Bindate Falam. Only the ignorance speak of the devotional service, karma yoga, as being different from the analytic study of the material world, Sankhya. Those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the result of both. Hare Krishna. So the message is clear here. Now there is a misunderstanding. Analytical study, we know Sankhya Yoga deals with the matter and spirit. Relationship between matter and spirit. And karma yoga means doing active activity, uh, prescribed duties. So these are apparently different or apparently contradictory. But they are not contradictory because the ultimate goal of both is to uh, achieve self-realization, self attain the transcendental knowledge and happiness and get away from this material entanglement. So this is ultimate goal of Sankhya Yoga as well as Karma Yoga or the de devotional service uh, that is uh, inaction, inaction or uh, transcendental devo devotional service Lord Krishna. So there is no difference between Sankhya Yoga or doing the devotional service to Krishna because ultimate goal of both is same and there are different paths to reach the same goal. Yeah, anybody else would like to read this one? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Patri, please continue. Please tell me. Hare Krishna. Yaksanke yaha prapyate sthanam tadhodayati tadhodayati ekam sankyam cha yogam cha yaha pashyati sa pashyati one who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service and who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service uh, devotional service to be on the same level sees things as they are hari krishna thank you yeah pashyati sa pashyati means Person who knows this, he sees this, is actually the seer. He knows the correct thing only. And what is those three things which are discussed here? First is Sankhya Yoga, the analytical study of matter and spirit. Second is Jnana Yoga. And third is Karma Sanyas. Karma Sanyas means the total renunciation from doing any kind of work. But in fact, if we study the chain of actions in all these three paths, it is virtually the same. In analytical study, what happens? There is detachment from, we can attain the knowledge. Attain the knowledge in analytical study, that means what is matter, what is body, we attain some kind of knowledge. And from uh, this knowledge, we when we attain this knowledge that we are soul, not the body, then there is detachment from the matter or the material nature. Then what happens that this knowledge also leads to the uh, leads us to find out our root water the, or root or the source from where we have come. And this source is of course Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in fact, whether it is Sankh Yoga or Jnana Yoga or Karma Yoga or Bhakti Yoga, ultimately they all have different paths, but they want to reach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And 
when there is there is knowledge of supreme personality of godhead there is attachment to krishna and when there is attachment to krishna there is no sense uh, gratification for self or there is no material entanglement so one who knows that the position reached by means of an analytical study can also be attained by devotional service and who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level, sees things as they are. So Krishna is telling Arjuna that, that do not get confused between renunciation uh, and uh, working uh, work, uh, in action in action or working for against my orders. Yes, Mataji, you can read this one. We can see two pictures here. Yes, Prabhupada. Yes, please. This is Bhagavad Gita 5.25. In many ways, they are, they are both the same. Jnana, Sankhya and Karma uh, Yoga Bhakti. And, and after and I have to read the just, points. Just a minute, Mataji. You, you can see two pictures on left and uh, right uh, upper corners. In left person, person is a renunciate. He's in a renounced order. He is doing meditation only. He has renounced all kind of activity. He has gone to a uh, secluded place, maybe a mountain or somewhere. And this is a person. You can see the Lord Krishna, Radharani, our uh, deity are present on the right top corner. And this person is cooking this lady is cooking and there are pots and water and everything is washing utensils probably and then so they he is doing some activity and he is doing not doing this activity on left side is described the part the status of renunciation now uh, shall i prabhu yeah so in fact one is doing sank yoga or bhakti yoga both are having these activities now what are the difference between what is the difference on Sankhya Yoga, the left side, and the Bhakti Yoga, right side. Yes, now let us take up Sankhya Yoga and Jnana Yoga first. Mati. Yes, Prabhupada. Neither hates uh, nor desire fruits. Free from dualities, liberated, comes, uh, comes to understand that he is soul, not this body, becomes detached from matter. Now here, this side, we have neither hates or desire fruits, free from dualities, liberated, comes to understand that he is soul, not this body, becomes attached to working for Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. You can see the last point makes the difference here. For a Gyan yes. to be or renunciation, he comes to understand that his soul, not this body, becomes detached from matter. Now, detachment is not the ultimate goal here. Detachment should be followed by some attachment. And attachment to Krishna. Yeah, here, this person, after doing all these duties, which are common, uh, uh, I mean, three points uh, of left are uh, common to the uh, fourth, uh, four points of the right side. So, becomes attached to working from Krishna. So, from where this person ends or considers it as goal or merging into the Brahman, if Aljans considers himself as the ultimate goal, from that point, a devotee starts his journey towards uh, serving of Krishna. He becomes attached to working for Krishna. That means we have to have a relationship with Krishna uh, by attaining this knowledge. So whether we are doing karma yoga, or bhakti yoga, or jnana yoga, the ultimate goal is knowing Krishna. So right, yeah. This please read this one. This is five point five. Sankhya and devotional service. In the first process, Sankhya, one who has to become detached from matter. And in the devotional yoga process, one has, uh, has to attach himself to the work of Krishna consciousness. Fra uh, factually, fact uh, factually, both processes are the same. Although, Superficially, one process appears to involve detachment and the other process appears to involve attachment. Detachment from matter and attachment to Krishna are one and the same. One who can see this, uh, this sees things as they are. Hare Thank Krishna. You. Thank you. Mother. So very clear message that uh, one should not renounce his work 
one should not go become a renunciate, should stop activities, one should continue to perform duties, uh, prescribe duties, offer the results to Krishna and uh, uh, render a devotional service to Krishna. Rather than renunciation of all kinds of activities, so this is clearly mentioned, the detachment from matter and attachment to Krishna are one and the same. Once you are detaching, no, we have a loving propensity. Even the animals have loving propensity. All of us know we want to be loved or we want uh, others to love us or love. we also, also want to love others. Animals are the best example. You can see a small pup, baby, dog or something, something. So uh, if we, this propensity is misdirected at this uh, in our present times. In nectar of devotion, it is very clear that that uh, the uh, source to which our unto whom we should repose our love or devotion is uh, in fact uh, misdirected. We think that we shall get happiness by attaching ourselves to material objects, where it is uh, because it is only chapal sukha. It is only flickering happiness which is provided by the material uh, objects or material happinesses. Only spiritual happiness is uh, eternal and everlasting. And it, it does not end here. Material happiness ends after some time, we know. But uh, this spiritual happiness, it is carried over to our next form of life also. So, so we have to perform our duty but at the same time, not detach ourselves from our duties, but uh, but we should detach for uh, uh, for from our own sense gratification. Use those matter for uh, service of Krishna, and we should get attachment. So renunciation or karma or bhakti yoga, they are not different; they are same because where one ends, the other begins. So this one also, Mataji, Chanda Mataji. Yes, Prabhuji. Sanyas, Sanyas to Mahabahu, Dukhama, Patu, Mayogataha, Yoga Yukto, Munir Brahma, Chachirena, Digachati. Merely renouncing all activities, yet not engaging in the devotional service of the Lord cannot make one happy. But a thoughtful person engaged in devotional service can achieve the supreme without delay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Bhattaji. So, uh, this is again a joining sentence or the make, making the two things coupled together. They're renouncing all activities yet not engaging in the devotional service. Lord cannot make one happy. Happiness will come only when we render loving, relation, uh, loving devotional service to Krishna. And the, the happiness always comes with relationship because happiness is the outcome of some kind of rasa or some kind of mellow. And we know that whether it is Shantrasa or Dasya Sakyam, Sakyam or Vasalya or Madhurya, or even uh, these are five, five primary rasas which give us happiness. So one has to have come some kind of devo uh, devotional service attitude towards Lord Krishna, then only one can. But a thoughtful person engaged in devotional can achieve the supreme without delay. Now, let us take the example of renunciation. Renunciation of material objects and going to forest and doing or mountains and doing you know meditation for long, long periods. Yes, still mind keeps on dwelling on objects of sense. That is very difficult because heart is not purified of most of the uh, in case of uh, you know renunciation or renunciates. But in in case of a devotee, the heart becomes purified as soon as one's developed relationship or does loving pure devotional service to Lord Krishna, then heart becomes purified. And then when there is purified, the result is detachment of from matter is there, attachment to Krishna is there. And the result is immediately visible. But for a yogi, mystic yogi, who is performing penance sacrifice for long, long years, the, this path is not easily attainable. He, he has to do it for many, many lives, many, many thousand years of uh, you know, duration. Then only he can reach what a devotee can achieve. So we'll stop to this state.
uh, and you can see on this picture what is happening here. Uh, yes, Mataji, anyone could tell what is happening in the right top picture? Yes, Prabhuji, this is Hari Kirtana is going uh, where the, the group of uh, devotees are uh, chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Yes. And one, uh, the under, uh, under it, uh, one is shown that uh, a yogi is uh, uh, there yeah. out of all the material, uh, you know, existence. Yeah, thank you. In, uh, Nam Sankirtana uh, going on with devotees. Yeah, and... in the... Nonsense. They are in the blissful mood. Yeah, they are in a blissful state. But what is the advantage of doing uh, Nam, uh, Nam Sankirtana in a group in a, on a streets? What is the benefit of such an activity? You know, Srila Prabhupada, he went to Thompson Park and he started in, uh, his, uh, you know, chanting of holy name of Mahamantra in uh, Thompson Park, New York. And the people started gradually gathering around him and they also started chanting. So what you are doing, you are propagating the name of Hari Nam. Hari Nam. And people, those who are listening, they are their consciousness is getting purified. And also, some, some would, inquisitors would, or Jnani would like to come close to this Sankirtana group and find out what is this mantra, why you are chanting, and what are the benefits of it. And people follow the uh, Mahamantra in their day-to-day uh, -day life. So this, it is not only propagation, it is also cleansing or purifying the entire environment. Entire environment, including all living entities who are hearing this name. So we have been always talking about Shravanam. Shravanam is the first stage of devotional service. When people listen, then people get attracted, they seek association of such people, and they are benefited. So this is the benefit of uh, uh, Nam Sankirtana. So Hare Krishna, if any questions, very quickly, because the other group has already joined uh, the, the, this time slot for the next match. Uh, any question? We will stop here. We will continue tomorrow again and wish you all the best. You know, and first day of Navratri and Hindu New Year. I wish you all success. Lord, Lord Krishna will be merciful and kind to all of us and show us the right path, right from the planning, thought and actions and, you know, from actions and uh, habit and character and our destiny. Let us pray to him. It resided. Attendance link is going to be posted by Mataji. Please. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Vancha Kalpya Krishna Krapa Sindhu Bahi Bhija Patita Nam Pavne Pyo Vishnu Vipyo Namo Nama Anant Kota Vishnu Kija Srila Prabhupada Kija Hare Krishna Prabhuji and Mataji Tanvat Kram to all of you. And thank you for uh, your association this evening. We'll meet tomorrow again, right time, 7 o'clock, same time. Thank you. Hare Krishna.